now it's time to learn one of the most frequently used graphs in terms of, well, just looking at graphs of qualitative data. However, they're not that easy to make by hand, and we're going to see why. It's a pie chart, also known as a circle graph. So it's sort of like you're cu cutting up a circular pie, <laughs> right? So it's a graphical display in which a circle is divided into sectors. That's what um, pieces of pizza or pieces of pie are called, um, that each represent a portion of the whole, i.e. a percentage. So the variables are qualitative. The sectors should be labeled with categories and relative frequency. Frequently, it's percent. So relative frequency, um, often it will be percent because you can see the percentage. Matter of fact, most often, by far the most often. Right? And the graph should be two-dimensional. It should be flat. It should not look like, well, pie as a matter of fact. All right, so there are 360 degrees in a circle. If we are going to make a pie chart of our social media app data, how many degrees should be in each section? Hmm. Okay, well, let's remember what our relative frequencies were for each of those sections. I have to pull up my sheet because I don't remember off the top of my head. All right, it was 0 0.069, 0 0.277, 0 0.278, and 0 0.069. And of course, the total made one. All right, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So what you can do is you can multiply each one of those by 360 and then just round the nearest degree. So you would take 360 times 0 0.069 and round it. All right, so let me grab a calculator. So 360 times 0 0.069 gets me 24.84, so I would round that to 25 degrees. Okay, well this is gonna be tedious. How about we have StatCrunch help us a little bit? All right, so I'm gonna close these graph windows just so we can see what we're doing here. And it's really not that hard. So you just go to data, let your mouse hover, you don't have to click on anything. Click on compute, actually don't let your mouse hover to compute and then finally click on expression and so I'm going to build an expression what I want is to take my relative frequencies I want to times it by 360 oh actually let's let's be even clearer I want to round so I'm going to use the round feature because wouldn't it be nice if it took care of it for us so I'm going to round I think I'm going to click just round and see how that goes. And then relative frequency times 360. And then I want to say OK. And I'm going to store this as degrees, right? Because it's the degrees on the circle. So I'm going to click Compute. And there we have it. 25 degrees, just like we found. And then there are the rest of them. 99 degrees, 161 degrees, uh, 50 degrees, 25 degrees and if we play our cards right this should add up to 360 and it does I can see it from here so it makes 360 as the total which fits into the bottom of our table right here so all of these degrees make 360 now of course if you want to sit there and write out how you found them right this is what you're doing but we have stat crunch it figured out all of them for us isn't that nice so now we have to try to draw all this on a circle that's going to be fun. Okay, so the center of the circle is right about there. So 180 degrees is the largest. It's straight across. So if I start at the top and go straight down to that center, 180 would be straight across. I don't want to go to 180. My largest section is 160. So I'm going to shave off some of that. How much? Well, I'm eyeballing it. I don't feel like pulling out a protractor. <laughs> All right, so this right here is Snapchat. Snapchat had 44.8%. You don't label it with degrees. You label it with the percentage that was in there. All right. Now, 99 degrees, 90 degrees is a right angle. So Instagram, if I went a right angle from there, that would be 90. I want to go a little bit more to get me 99, and that would be Instagram. So now if you're thinking, how will I ever draw this by hand? You won't. You're doing it one time to prove to yourself that you can do it and to also realize how terrible this is and that we want to make computers do this. All right, so Instagram was 27.6%. And then, uh, let's see, 
Twitter. Twitter was 50 degrees. So let's see. If that's 45, I don't know, 50. Sure. I'll call it 50. I got no problems with that. So that's 50. And that would be Twitter, which was 13.8%. And then the last two are evenly distributed because they're both 25 degrees. So I'm just going to kind of wing it here and say that both of these, and when it gets too small, they'll put little arrows. And so they'll just say, this is none, which was 6.9%. Uh, and this is Facebook, which is also 6.9%. And of course, we would never do this this way. <laughs> and usually, you know, they they shade them, you know, make them pretty, pretty colors. So you'll shade some of them like this, etc. This is what I have highlighters for. This is why they're useful. <laughs> All right, so here's Facebook. I should have done Facebook in blue since that's their color, but I'll do Twitter in blue because Twitter also uses blue. There you go. Now, that's just terrible. How about we have a computer do it? Because I bet you Alana was not completely accurate since she just eyeballed those angles and did not pull out a protractor because she can't remember where one is in her room. All right, so let's go back and let's go to graph. And again, I'm just letting my mouse hover. Pie chart. Again, we don't have the raw data, so we're using a summary. That's what a relative frequency distribution is viewed as far as a computer program like Stat, um, StatCrunch is concerned. So I click with summary. My categories were in social media app. My counts were in, and it's up to you. Do you want to do frequency? Do you want to do relative frequency? Your choice. So I'll do frequency right here. And then I would rather have it display the percent of the total. Percents are way more useful for um, pie charts. But if you want the count for some reason, the actual frequencies, you can do that. Um, you could also do this with relative frequency and say percent. It'll, it'll work either way, whichever way you like it. Um, value ascending, do you want it to go um, in alphabetical order? Do you want it to just be in whatever order the worksheet was in? Or do you want it to go in count? Um, I actually went in count descending order when I did it myself. So I'm actually going to leave it that one. But those are irrelevant. And so then I click compute. And if you want to see, well, I'll just leave it. But my starting angle started at 90. So if you want to see one that looks like mine, um, you can start it at 90 because I started at the top. If you start at zero, it means you start over on the far right of the circle. But either way, it'll be fine. Leave it at zero or leave it at 90. And then click compute. And there you have it. Oh, and it didn't look like mine. I mean, it does in terms of sections, but they put it in a different order. Let me see here. Yeah, interesting. So it went in a different order. It went count descending. If I went count ascending, I'm curious to know how that would change it. Yeah, that looks more like mine. So that's fascinating. They must be working their other way around. So there's Snapchat, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's none, and then there's Facebook. And you can see the percentages over on the right. Although you can attach labels to these, I believe. Actually, I'm not seeing that option in here. So I'll just have to leave it just like it was. There it is. Fascinating, huh? So easy to look at in theory, but hard to draw correctly in practice, right? If you're, especially if you're drawing by yourself, <laughs> not so much fun. And of course, if we want to add a title, we could have done it in the edit menu. You can also do it by clicking on those three lines down there and say, you know, this is favorite social media apps for math 133 students or something like that. And there you go. Now you have a title at the top, which of course we should also have put on our own paper. So I'll just kind of title it right here.